So in today's fun-filled video, we're gonna go over the toilet. If it's not flushing completely, if it's making noises, if it's leaking, all of those items. If your toilet's not working right, it can be a pretty crappy situation and plumbers can be expensive. So I'm gonna go over every part of the toilet, how it gets your number one and number two into the deepest pits of hell and how we can get it there more efficiently. Video starts off a little dark. Please be patient. I drain the tank and then you can see everything that's going on inside. And I cover everything. Running toilets, different noises it's making, if it's leaking all of that so please for the love of god give me 12 and a half minutes of your lives and all of your questions will be answered we're going to cover all the signs and symptoms of bad toilet components how to diagnose them and how to replace everything anybody can do this it is not hard so watch the whole video and all your questions will be answered and i really thank you for your support so go ahead and remove the back lid to the tank and no matter what toilet you have they are pretty much all going to look the same inside here. Unless you have one of those bidet toilets that has like a built-in water fountain. Um, or if you have one of the ones that has a two button push up here, the only difference that makes is one small button is if you're going 10, 100, and then the other button is to make a more complete flush and let more water through for a 10, 200. But other than that, they're pretty much all gonna look identical inside here. So the different parts we're gonna be looking at, we have our fill valve assembly, which is all this over here. You have your fill tube here, your handle assembly with a rod and chain, and that rod and chain goes down and connects into the flapper. And there's different styles of flappers, different styles of fill valves, all that, but they are all interchangeable. So I'm gonna go ahead and flush the toilet. We're gonna to see what's happening when we do that. So when we push down on the handle, that chain is gonna lift that flapper up and let all the water out to flush the toilet. And then you'll see that flapper go down slowly. And then you see our fill valve is filling back up here. And as the fill valve is filling back up, you're going to see this float start to rise up. And when it rises up, this handle is going to lift up and click the fill valve off. And so here we're going to start hitting the ball float here. And the float's going to rise up and click that fill valve off so it stops putting water into the tank. Now you may have different styles of fill valves here. This one here is a plastic that rides on this center shaft. Some may be a big rubber ball that hang off to the side. Um, and then we have this new style that I'm going to be installing today, or newer I should say, where it just has a block inside here that there's a ball in there, a little plastic ball, when that rises up and this float inside here rises up, it shuts this off. And then here you can see a diagram of the big rubber ball on the end of a rod I had mentioned you may also see. And then here's what I have right now. So now when you flush your toilet, if you're not getting a complete flush or you have to hold your handle down to let more water out, what could be going on there is your flapper. There are different styles of flappers. Now I'm going to flush this one more time so we can drain this and I want to show you the style I have on here now. So you'll see this one here is hollow on the underside here. So what we have there is very similar to this style here. So when this rises up, there's air trapped inside here from this. And so that's what allows us to come down slowly. So it's going to rise up. All that water is going to rush out flush the toilet, and then this is going to slowly come back down. If you have more of a plain flapper where it's just a plastic flap and it doesn't have this big air pocket, it may come down faster, not giving you a complete flush. And that's where you'll see a toilet where you have to hold your handle down to let all the water run out um, before you release the handle. Otherwise, you don't get a complete flush. So now let's get into some common issues with your toilet. If after you flush your toilet, you hear water trickling in the tank and it just trickles for forever, what you can have going on is a couple things here. Looking down in your flapper, you may have to clean the underside of that where it mates around that white plastic tube. So looking at this one here, you would have to clean this underside. Otherwise, there could be uh, film built up on there and water would be leaking down through and that's where you're hearing that trickling sound. Another issue could be our chain here. You see we have some excess chain down in there. Sometimes the excess chain is so long that it gets stuck underneath that flapper. And so again, the flapper is not seating down around that plastic tube firmly and water's trickling out. So that's all you would do to fix that. 
So some other issues where you're not getting a complete flush is your handle might not be adjusted right. So again, you see the chain goes down and hooks on the front of the flapper. You need to adjust that chain. You'll see there's different holes in our arm that come down from our handle. You need to adjust that slack so that when I press on the handle, I'm immediately moving that flapper. If I have too much slack in here, to where I have to press this handle down two or three inches before it actually starts to lift that flap, I have too much slack in there. Also, if I don't have enough slack, that could be another reason why we're hearing water leaking in our toilet. That flapper may not be going down all the way because there's not enough slack in the chain allowing it to seat firmly down on that plastic tube. So if you do have a leaky flapper, they are very easy to replace. All you're doing is taking these rubber arms off of these plastic stems, disconnecting our chain right there, and replacing it with a new one. Very easy fix. A lot of times these chains after so long will get rusty and break. You can get these chains also in a new handle kit, and that's also very simple. It's just gonna hook right on there, and it has a hook on the other side, or on the other end here to hook onto this handle. And then this handle can also become corroded and break, and that's also available. All you do is unscrew that plastic nut, and this handle will pull right out, and you replace it with a new one. So now moving on to our biggest issue, and my personal problem, would be a bad fill valve. So indications of a bad fill valve would be a running toilet, a noisy toilet, or it's not filling up all the way, or it's filling up slowly. So what mine is doing is, like I say, we can watch that float rise on this shaft, clicking off the water. Well, it seems to be moving pretty fine here, but there must be some film built up around this plastic shaft, because every now and then this float sticks, and it doesn't shut off the fill, and so then the water is overflowing the tank and running all over my floor. So I'm gonna be replacing that today with this other style. So anytime you need to do any work on here, whether it would be replace the flapper or the fill valve, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is shut your water off. So just look under your toilet or behind your toilet and you will find a hose coming down off of it somewhere and just turn that clockwise to shut the water off. Once you've shut your water off, you can flush your toilet, letting all that water out and then it will not refill, which is where we're at here. So now that I have my tank empty and my water shut off, first thing I'm gonna to do to replace this fill valve is come down underneath of here. And right where this hose runs up into the tank, I'm gonna unscrew the hose and then I'm going to undo this other plastic nut that holds the fill valve in. Now even after shutting off the water and flushing the toilet, there is still gonna be a little bit of water in here yet. So when we undo this, we are gonna have some water leaking out. So go ahead and throw down some old bath towels or something to catch what drips out of here. Okay, so once we have that plastic nut off of the bottom and all the water's drained out, we can lift this fill valve up out of the tank there, out of the bottom of the tank, and just disconnect it right here where this slides on. And we can remove the old assembly. Now here's what my new one looks like. You'll just have to follow the directions on whichever one you purchase. It came with this tube and then different fittings for different toilets. And the directions tell you based on if you have a Kohler toilet, a Mansfield toilet, or whichever, how to assemble these other little pieces that come in here. And now this style also expands depending on the depth of the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this in there and take a look. And I see that's a little down in there low. So we wanna stretch this out a little bit. So on this particular model, I'm just gonna turn this adjust it out, put it back in there, and, actually can, and I can actually measure this to the old one to get an idea where I need to be. And that actually looks just about perfect right there. So I'm gonna try that. So I'm going to set this right down in there, make sure that rubber seal's seated, and I'm going to go ahead and install my plastic nut on the underside to hold this fill valve. Okay, so I tightened down my plastic nut on my fill valve underneath, and then I also reconnected the water supply line. We're going to trim this down so that it fits right over on here. So I'm going to need to get a measurement and trim this. Okay, so I have that trim so there's no kinks in it and it clears the top of the tank so it's not hitting when I put the lid on. 
So now we're going to go ahead and make our other adjustments to this fill tank, and this is going to vary a little bit depending on what style you have. So to adjust your fill valve, you'll just have to follow the directions that came with your particular fill valve. Now I also want to note that when you're installing these, you're not using any kind of thread tape or anything like that. This is all just plastic fittings and rubber seals, so you don't need to use any of that. So I have my plastic nut on the fill valve tightened, and we have our water line tightened back up. Now we're ready to turn the water supply back on and adjust your fill valve. And again, this will vary depending on what model you have. But basically what's happening is water coming out of here is going into the bowl of the toilet while other water comes out of here to fill this tank. You want both of those to fill at the same rate. And so on this particular fill valve, if my bowl fills faster than my tank, I need to turn this dial to cut the flow of water to the bowl down a little bit. Now I already pretty well have this adjusted, but let's go ahead and turn the water on so you can see what's going on here. And the reason this is important is because once this tank fills up, this shuts off so no more water is going into there. So you want to make sure that this is filling fast enough to be full before the valve cuts off all water. And how full the bowl gets, you should already see a mark in your toilet from where the previous one stopped. So that marks what you're aiming for. So now that we have that all adjusted, let's get a different angle here to show you what's going on when you lift your handle. I think this is a better, I think this is a better angle than what I showed you previously. So I'm just gonna lift up on the handle and release. I'm not gonna hold it. And so you see that style plunger slowly closes. And that gives me a complete flush. Some of these other stopper styles go down too fast and that's what makes you have to hold your handle down and you don't want to have to do that. It's better that once you have that chain adjusted to cut off the slack. I'm going to flush this one more time and you'll see where if that chain was any longer it could get caught underneath of the plunger and then that would leave water to leak into the toilet and that's where you would hear your toilet running after you flush it would be water leaking again between that stopper and the plastic uh, tube there. Let's go ahead and do that one more time and you'll be able to see the chain. So you'll see how it's possible for that chain to get stuck under that stopper there, so you just need to watch that. So that's all there is to diagnosing and repairing your own toilet, replacing the fill valve, Again, if you hear water leaking after you're done flushing, it could be your plunger, it could be your chain's not adjusted, chain tension's not adjusted right. Most th common thing you're gonna have is this handle rust out, or that chain rust out, or that stopper down there gets warped from age, or gets, gets like a buildup of gunk on it to where it's not seating and sealing properly, and that's allowing water to sneak past it and making it sound like your toilet's running. All very easy fixes and very cheap, saving you from having to call a plumber. Really hope this video helped you out. If it did, please hit it with a like. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be working on posting more around the home videos to save you some money so you can do your own repairs. Really appreciate you watching.